Southern New England's trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Our top story today at noon, Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza unveiling his final budget proposal of his term for the 2023-24 year. But the $567 million plan may not be sitting so well with some residents. While some will save money, others may pay more in property taxes. ABC6 News reporter Olivia DeRocha is live in the newsroom to break this down for us. Olivia? Good afternoon, Doreen. Yeah, many residents in Providence received letters in the mail this week with a newly assessed value of their property. Now, with that, many people likely saw their property value skyrocket with the red hat hot housing market, meaning you're likely to now pay more on property taxes if this plan passes. Providence Mayor Jorge Alorza unveiling a $567 million budget proposal for the upcoming fiscal year for the city on Tuesday evening. That proposed plan concerning some residents, especially those who recently had their home property value reassessed by the city and saw its value skyrocket. People are moving to Providence. While this is a sign of a healthy city, it also brings us challenges. The cost of housing today is exorbitant. Alorza proposed a decrease in residential tax rate so some will save money. But like most, if your home went up in value, you'll end up paying more to the city. Providence resident Evelyn Lopez says this anticipated hike in prices just represents the rising prices of virtually everything nowadays. We live in a really bad situation. I think this is the worst. Lopez worried people are going to get priced out of their homes or even their apartments if landlords raise their prices. Now we're scared. What are we going to eat? What are we going to do? Actually, thanks God, I'm, it's I'm myself. I live in by myself. But you can imagine that people, they're living with three or four people in the house. And again, this is a proposal is not set in stone. Now, Alors's budget must be approved by the City Council Finance Committee before the 2022-2023 fiscal year starts in July 1st. For now, live in the newsroom, Olivia DeRocha, ABC6 News. All right, Olivia, thank you. And new at noon, the Rhode Island State Police will get a new top cop. On Friday, Lieutenant Colonel Darnell Weaver will be sworn in as the 15th superintendent of the Rhode Island State Police. Governor Dan McKee made the announcement just a few hours ago. Lieutenant Colonel Weaver is a 28-year veteran of the force, a Cranston native, and the state's first black superintendent. Outgoing Colonel James Manny tells ABC6 his successor must have these attributes. I'm going to be uh, a little private in that conversation I'm going to have with them, but really it's going to be about the hallmarks that determine what is important, not only to the troopers, but to the residents of this state. Transparency, honesty, ethics, integrity. These are the hallmarks. Weaver will replace Manny, who is retiring and becoming the town manager of South Kingstown. Plenty of news from the State House this week. A controversial sex ed bill for Rhode Island schools is set to be heard by the Senate at the State House tonight. This proposed bill outlines sex education for grades 6 through 12 to include same sex relationships, gender identity, and pleasure based sexual relations. During the House committee hearings in February, some parents testified against the bill, saying this type of instruction should be kept out of the classroom. Those Senate hearings start at 4 o'clock today. The Let R.I. Vote Act is moving on to the House after it was approved by the Senate last night. With this bill, legislators want to make permanent the changes making voting easier during the pandemic, including wider use of mail ballots. It also allows online mail ballot applications. And the bill to bring back happy hour in Rhode Island is moving on to the Senate. Despite some Republican opposition, it passed the House 54 to 10. Happy hour has been banned in Rhode Island since the 1980s. Under this legislation, bars and restaurants must serve food with the discounted drinks. Advertisements mentioning happy hour must also mention food as part of the deal. And now to the weather as we take a live look outside with our sky cam. Lots of sunshine out there today. Chelsea's in the weather center with your first forecast. Hi, Chelsea. Hey, Doreen. Yeah, kind of a blend of sun and clouds outside the area right now. Temperatures themselves are in the low to mid 50s. That breeze from the northwest coming in around 15 miles per hour. And it's going to stay breezy for the rest of the day today through tonight and into tomorrow. But the rain from overnight cleared out very, very quickly this morning. And all of us are looking at those temperatures in the low to mid, if not upper 50s out towards the Cape and the islands where we're getting some sunshine. You're looking at a mix of sun and clouds outside for the afternoon hours. A couple little sprinkles just off to our west 
and we're going to watch for those. It's not out of the question that we get a few raindrops coming through the area. Otherwise, dry conditions and we continue to get brighter as we head through the later part of the day. We have a clear night ahead of us. The breeze continues out of the northwest and by tomorrow morning we're down into the 30s. It's going to be chilly to start the day. I'll have a look at your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Joy? Chelsea, thank you. ABC 6 is following developing news out of Philadelphia where an investigation is underway after a deadly incident outside a bar. The victim is a former New Bedford School Committee member. ABC 6 News anchor Casey Kantz following these developments today on the story. He's live in the newsroom with the latest. Case? Yeah, Doreen, those who knew 41-year-old Eric Pope said he had a love of politics from an early age. In fact, he was the youngest person ever elected to the New Bedford School Committee at the age of 21, but his life has tragically been cut short. According to media outlets, Pope had moved to D.C. and was visiting friends in Philadelphia when in the early morning hours of April 16th was involved in an altercation outside of Taboo Bar and Lounge. That's in the center city section of Philly. A bouncer seen on surveillance video here punching Pope. Pope falls immediately, hitting his head on the pavement. He succumbed to his injuries over the weekend after being put on life support. The big question today is will charges be filed and if so, what will they be? I can tell you it's a situation that we take very seriously and as soon as we are ready to make a public announcement about it, we will do so. The bouncers there, they're horrible. Now that bar claims the bouncer was not affiliated with them. Those familiar with that neighborhood telling local reporters in Philadelphia that they've had issues with the security staff before. Meanwhile, New Bedford Mayor John Mitchell reacting to this news via his Facebook page. He said he was shocked and saddened to hear about Eric Pope's death. He called him a champion for the city's school children and offered his condolences to Pope's family in hopes that justice will be served. That bouncer was not arrested, but local reports out of Philadelphia again saying that charges are expected. Pope served on the New Bedford School Committee from 2001 to 2010. Of course, as soon as we know more, we'll be sure to pass along those details to you. Live in the newsroom today, Casey Kantz, ABC 6 News. All right, Casey, thank you. And the man charged in a deadly shooting at the Fab City Lounge in Pawtucket earlier this year is set to be arraigned today. Pawtucket police say Traquan Baker shot and killed a man and injured another in the parking lot of the Fab City Cigar Lounge back in January. He's charged with murder and other gun offenses. That led to criticism of the lounge from Pawtucket's mayor and a decision to temporarily revoke its liquor license by the city council. Fab City Lounge has a hearing with the Department of Business Regulation for a final determination on its liquor license. That is set for May 10th and 11th. ABC 6 with a focus on our schools now. And East Greenwich school leaders say they are taking action after a coach was accused of inappropriately touching students and was fired. First, the background. Former EG High School assistant volleyball coach Donovan Baker was fired, accused of targeting the entire JV team, sending text messages and Snapchats at all hours of the day, and forcibly trying to kiss girls while they were in high school. The school department also fired the head coach. Now the school committee is working on a new professional conduct with students policy and has scheduled a vote for its May 17th meeting. A new mobile app will also be used exclusively for coach and player communications. Barrington High School leaders will meet with students today to discuss the school's honors program. East Bay RI reports that students will be asked about their experience with the honors distinction program in English and social studies. There was an outcry from parents after officials decided to cancel the honors distinction option in next year's program of studies. Now work is underway to rework the program instead of canceling it entirely. Coming up, a Marine veteran jailed in Moscow is coming home. Details on a dramatic prisoner exchange between the two countries leading to freedom. And a Wimbledon tennis champ can defend his title. How the improving coronavirus cases are letting more athletes compete.
New details now on the death of Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State being laid to rest at this hour, President Joe Biden giving her eulogy. Other listed speakers include former President Bill Clinton and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Albright served as Secretary of State in the Clinton administration. The 84-year-old was the first woman to hold that position. Albright's family says she died after a battle with cancer. And now to a developing story out of Russia, where officials say American Trevor Reed has been released from prison. The former Marine from Texas had been detained there since 2019, but his family tells ABC he is now on a flight back to the U.S. after the two countries held a prisoner exchange. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Former Marine Trevor Reed is now a free man heading back to the U.S. after spending nearly three years in a Russian prison on what U.S. officials long described as bogus charges. The U.S. and Russia coming to a surprise deal in a time of heightened tension. Talks for this swap ongoing for months and intensified in recent weeks amid concerns over Reed's health. U.S. officials agreeing to hand over convicted Russian drug trafficker Konstantin Yeroshenko, who was serving a 20-year federal prison sentence in exchange for Reed. The 30-year-old was arrested in 2019. Russian authorities claiming he assaulted a police officer. Reed was later sentenced to nine years in prison, the U.S. government calling his detainment unjust, his family maintaining his innocence, his parents speaking with CNN after his release. He sounds kind of subdued. I think he's a little overwhelmed. Um, yeah, he seemed and, to be in shock a little bit. We're just glad that obviously he's on his way home, but they also have a doctor on the plane. So he's getting checked out, and that was our main concern. Trevor telling his father the prisoner exchange happened on the tarmac in Turkey. Trevor quickly told us that they, the American plane pulled up next to the Russian plane, and they walked both prisoners across at the same time like you see in the movies. The Reid family thanking the Biden administration. The president called them as they were talking to Trevor to tell them he'd been freed. Biden saying he's celebrating Reid's return, adding the negotiations that allowed us to bring Trevor home require difficult decisions that I do not take lightly. Reed was one of several Americans detained by Russia. WNBA star Brittany Griner has been in prison since February for allegedly having hashish oil in her bag. And American tourist Paul Whelan has been in Russian custody since 2018 after being arrested on espionage charges. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Novak Djokovic will be allowed to defend his Wimbledon title this summer. This after tournament organizers announced players who are unvaccinated against COVID can compete at the All England Lawn Tennis Club. The club said because the United Kingdom does not require vaccination to enter it, they will not require it either, but they do encourage it. Djokovic was not allowed at the Australian Open in January after having his visa revoked due to his unvaccinated status. The tournament takes place in London from June 27th to July 10th. Coming up, another historic launch for SpaceX. What makes this mission so special? And the return of the summer tradition, water fire. Details on the announcement coming later today.
Four astronauts are headed to the International Space Station. This SpaceX launch this morning sent them on their way in a Crew Dragon capsule. One of the astronauts, Jessica Watkins, is now the first black woman to go on a long-duration space mission. The launch sees SpaceX returning to its partnership with NASA after a private mission Monday. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Well, we had some rain moving through the area yesterday afternoon. It was very dreary out there overnight as well, but we dried out very quickly this morning. We got into some sunshine and now we have kind of a blend of sun and clouds. That system still spinning around, gradually pushing away from us, and we end up with that blend of sun and clouds continuing for the afternoon. Now, within some of these clouds, it's not out of the question that there's a few little raindrops, a couple little sprinkles possible, but for the most part, we are drying out. The one thing that we are dealing with today is breezy conditions. Temperatures right now in the low to mid 50s in most spots. 53 in Providence, 54 in Smithfield, 54 in Westerly, 52 in Newport. Mid to upper 50s for the Cape and for the islands right now. We're going to continue to see these temperatures hovering in the mid to upper 50s range outside for the rest of the day today. You're looking at a little bit of a warm up from yesterday for most of us, maybe a degree or two. But those temperatures are going to be dropping as we head through tonight and into the coming days. Typically this time of year, our final few days of April, we should be waking up in the 40s. An afternoon high should make it into the low to mid 60s. Instead, by tomorrow morning, we're going to be down to the 30s and our highs will only be in the low 50s range. So we end up about 10 degrees cooler than average for both Thursday and Friday. It's this breeze from the northwest that's bringing in cooler temperatures behind the cold front that brought some of that rain overnight. Sustained winds 10 to 15 miles per hour and some gusts are coming in for many of us around 10 or 15 to 25 miles per hour outside close to 30 in the Providence area right now. So definitely a breezy afternoon. This breeze isn't going to do us any favors overnight. It's going to continue to bring in cool temperatures and make us feel even colder because of the wind by early tomorrow morning. Right now in the satellite radar image, we are mainly dry. A little bit of a wider view shows you a couple little sprinkles off to our west through western Connecticut. We may get clipped by a few couple isolated raindrops. Otherwise, that system continues to pull away from us. And we end up with a blend of sun and clouds in the coming days, kind of partly sunny conditions for Thursday, for Friday, for Saturday. No real significant rain in our forecast, which also means those pollen counts are going to be staying very high through the coming days. Now, our highs today do make it into the mid to upper 50s, but look at that cool air up to our north and our west, and our breeze is coming in from the northwest. Our highs won't be that cold tomorrow, but they will be about 10 degrees cooler than average as we head through again Thursday and Friday. Now, hour by hour, besides a couple very isolated sprinkles, we're looking at partly to mostly sunny conditions later into the afternoon. We are clear and breezy overnight. Temperatures in the 30s tomorrow morning. Some spots may feel like the 20s. Tomorrow, blend of sun and clouds, still breezy. Temperatures in the low to mid 50s. We head through tomorrow night. Another clear and cold night. Temperatures down to the 30s. Breeze makes us feel even cooler. We head into Friday. Partly sunny conditions. Temperatures in the low to mid 50s. Both Thursday and Friday look very, very similar to each other with that low system just sitting right offshore. Today, mid to upper 50s range. Couple little raindrops possible. It's breezy. Those winds continue overnight. Temperatures down into the upper 30s. You factor in the wind by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's not out of the question that we have a few spots that feel more like the 20s outside because of that wind. So be prepared for a little bit of a cool start to the day tomorrow. From there, temperatures in the low to mid 50s for the afternoon. A partly sunny day. Still a breezy day out of the northwest. And temperatures in the 50s aren't terrible, but they're certainly much cooler than where we should be for the later part of April. Friday, mid 50s expected. Upper 50s on Saturday after a cool start to the day. Then May 1st, sunshine, temperatures back into the 60s range. Tori? Elsie, thank you. But get better get your calendar out if you want to see water fire in action this year. The Providence Attraction will be announcing its 2022 schedule today. The public is invited to attend a press conference. It's tonight at 630 at Water Place Park, where a basin lighting will accompany the announcement. 20 braziers will be lit. Water Fire says that's to commemorate the first full season since 2019. You can check out that full schedule on our website, abc6.com. We have a link there. Still ahead, Apple's new offering that keeps track of exactly how much water you're really drinking in a day.
In consumer news this noontime, JetBlue is cutting flights this summer, including one that arrives in Providence. The airline facing staffing shortages, cutting or suspending nine more routes, adding that to the 27 that were removed last month. They're hoping this will help prevent further flight disruption. So starting May 30th, flights from West Palm Beach to Providence will stop until September 7th when they will pick up at once a day. Well, Apple wants to help you stay hydrated. The company is offering two new smart water bottles in retail and online stores. The bottles transmit data onto Apple Health, helping you track your water consumption. They're supposed to keep water cold for 24 hours. They start at about $60. Still ahead, time to test your luck. The Powerball jackpot soaring nearly half a billion dollars. Plus, Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast right after this. Well, here we go again. Another massive lottery jackpot is up for grabs. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is up to 454 million bucks. Nobody won the jackpot prize in Monday's drawing. There was a $2 million winner Monday for matching part of the winning draw, but that was in North Carolina. So put it on the list. I make know. the stop, Chelsea. I just yep. need to buy the ticket. You mm -hmm. talked about that this morning. I mean, and it's so funny. I only buy them when it's 400 right. something, yeah. not when it's 20 million. Right, because why would you only want 20? I, I, I need more than that. I know. Go figure. But that's almost half a billion dollars. It's just insane. It is insane. It's a yeah. fine day to get mm -hmm. outside and get your air and stuff. True. It's a little breezy. Mix of sun and clouds, but a cooler overnight. Tomorrow morning is going to be a chilly one to start the day. Uh, we'll feel a little bit cooler than that. Temperatures in the afternoon will be in the mid 50s, similar on Friday, mid to upper 50s on Saturday, and then uh, by Sunday, which is May 1st, we'll be back into the 60s, and that's where we'll stay next week. Oh, that sounds good, but I yes. am bracing for tomorrow morning. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chels, thank you. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first at four. Have a great day, everybody.